we want to suggest to you that which puts all the pieces of the jigsaw together to give you the big picture the Islamic eschatology is saying to us that the time has come for the United States of America to be replaced as the ruling state in the world and for those young students who we have here today and there's so many of them let us explain what is a ruling state to rule the world as a ruling state this does not mean that you have to rule every square inch of downtown Chicago and Jakarta no a ruling state when we use the term is a state whose power and dominance in the world cannot be challenged by any rival or combination of rivals in this sense of the word the holy state of Israel established by Nabi Dawood alayhi salam the prophet David and Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam the prophet Solomon was the ruling state in the world and Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam made the dua which is in the Quran that Allah may grant that no state in history could ever rival this state the holy state of Israel and so came the status of a ruling state you know about Jerusalem in the Quran I forgot it over there we said the back Jerusalem in the Quran we explained the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, about three ruling states three ruling states created by Dajjal in his three stages of his mission before Dajjal will emerge in this world of space and time as a human being he would be a Jew he would be a young man he would be powerfully built he would have curly hair and from Jerusalem he's going to declare I am the Messiah and all the Zionists the Christian Zionists and the Jewish Zionists and their followers would say yes he is the Messiah but you and I know that would be a lie he is someone who has been created and programmed to impersonate the Messiah and you and I know that the Messiah is the son of Mary Nabi Isa alayhi salam the prophet Jesus he would be Dajjal the false messiah and the time has now arrived in the process of history where after having created Britain as the first ruling state with something that they call Pax Britannica and then having caused or engineered the collapse of Britain and its replacement with the United States of America as a second ruling state of the world with something that they call Pax Americana we have now reached that moment in time using our methodology which they reject Protestant Islam rejects our methodology and Protestant Islam says don't listen to Imran Hussein don't listen to him he has no Akida he's a Sufi well go ahead go ahead but you're still my brothers and I don't speak disrespectfully of you but this methodology is delivering the goods this methodology is explaining the world today and I won't end without explaining the methodology that we are now located at that moment in time and I'm addressing you now Protestant Islam when the Jal's day like a month is ending and his day like a week is beginning and a new ruling state is emerging which will replace the United States of America that is the big picture the jigsaw puzzle has now been put together 
Israel wants to replace the United States of America as the third and last ruling state in the world. You have never said that, Protestant Islam. We are saying it. And guess what? The Muslims around the world are convinced that we are correct. And we thank Allah who gave us the insight to be able to see the big picture through Islamic eschatology. When Israel takes over from the United States and the financial crash and the economic crash and the military crash and the hatred for the United States around the world and so on are all part of the agenda to bring down the United States. When Israel takes over from the United States and the world then Israel must establish its political and economic dominion over the whole world. And the first people they have to, to rule will the Arabs. Of course. Otherwise no Jew will accept this as a ruling state. And so the Arab Spring has come at this time to facilitate the wars that Israel will have to wage in order to subdue the Arab world and establish an Israeli political and economic dominion over the Arab world. And yet Arab Islamic scholarship knows nothing about this. Arab Islamic scholarship knows absolutely nothing about it. That is our predicament today. That we need a new generation of scholars of Islam using the methodology that we are offering to be able to read the world correctly. It is at this time that we have to ask why is it that Protestant Islam has emerged at this time with an insistence that religion is based on texts that your hands have to be here and not here and that your feet have to be like this and not like this and that your pants or your pajama must reach here and not there I'm still using respectful language. You should have heard my teacher, Maulana Fadl Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah. He thundered at them 40 years ago. He gave them, he blasted them left, right, and center. But Imran doesn't have his thunder. My teacher of blessed memory, Maulana Fadl Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah. This Salafi version of the faith, and remember, Salafis, you are my brothers. And I am not picking up boxing gloves against you. This is an academic, an intellectual discourse. We differ. Why can't we differ? Why can't we exchange views without hatred for each other? Why? You are my brothers. But that does not mean that you are immune from my offering a valid criticism of a methodology which is incapable of recognizing why the financial crash is taking place now. Why the economic crash is taking place now. Whereas our methodology is explaining why it is taking place now. And there's something else which is happening at this time. The pieces are coming together. We have a group called the Tablig Jamaat. Who have fanned out around the world. And they are beautiful brothers. Oh yes. When you see the way they live, you see how they are regular in their salat, they dress in a particular way, they are conforming with the sunnah. You say, Masha Allah. Masha Allah. I don't think we can fit Tablik Jamaat in the Blue Jeans Jamaat, can we? You know the Blue Jeans Jamaat. <laughs> but why is it that at this particular time when we face it, a challenge different from any that we have ever faced before that we should now have this protestant version of Islam with that epistemology and with this gathering of large numbers of people 500,000 Ijtima in downtown Chicago Dajjal is not bothered at all about that. Why? They show no concern whatsoever. 
they show Tablik Jamaat shows absolutely no concern whatsoever with Islamic eschatology that would explain the reality of the world today and which would anticipate the events which are unfolding today and tomorrow. I say that this is not happening by accident and it is time for us to deliver a wake-up call lovingly of course not with boxing gloves to all those who are members of the Tablik Jamaat the only Jamaat in the world incidentally which has closed the doors of the masjid to me wherever in the world I have gone I cannot go into a masjid controlled by Tablik Jamaat to teach them that which they do not know and they don't have the teachers to teach it most of the Salafi masjids are the same except for uh, may Allah bless him Sheikh Faiz in Sydney Sheikh Faiz who is the former Salafi Sheikh of, of Australia graduate of the Islamic University of Medina and when I was in Australia for my second visit in 2002 Sheikh Faiz came to my home where I was staying and brought a Lebanese breakfast one morning so we could sit down and have Lebanese breakfast and then invited me to his center to give a lecture on Islam and the international monetary system and before the lecture could take place he asked me to come into his office and he said to me Sheikh Imran I want to become your student those were the words he spoke to me well he's such a learned man I should be his student why is it why can't we give you a wake-up call and yet remain brothers with each other because your methodology is wrong you're putting your head in the sand like an ostrich in Tablik Jamaat and not paying attention to understanding events unfolding in the world is dangerous for the Ummah it's like sleepwalking through history I thought Ronald Reagan was the only one who did it but that's what you're doing Tablik Jamal do not be annoyed with me do not be offended because you're my brothers now let's come to the methodology the Prophet said alayhi salatu waslam that every Prophet warned about the Jal and the Prophet knew alayhi salam warned about the Jal but I'm going to tell you something that no one has ever said before me the Dajjal sees with the left eye, he's blind in the right eye, it looks like a bulging grip. The Dajjal sees with the left eye, he's blind in the right eye, it looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord is not one eye. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word kafir, kafir, kafir. And every mu'min will be able to read it, whether that mu'min is literate or illiterate and so Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu will be able to read it kafir but Tony Blair won't be able to read it you know he was just convicted for war crimes right here in KL so we sent Tony Blair to the eye specialist check out his eyes why he cannot read this kafir Oh, when you sending Tony Blair, send George Bush also with him. <laughs> and then the report comes, nothing wrong with their eyes. Well then how come they can't read, but the mu'min can read? We say, and this is our viewpoint, and you don't have to accept it. Is that when the Jal sees with the left eye, this is religious symbolism at work that he is seeing with external sight and when he is blind in the right eye this is religious symbolism at work and he is internally blind and that's why the kafir cannot read because when the mu'min reads he's not reading with these eyes alone He's returning, he's reading with internal sight. And did the Prophet not say 
sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam I wish I had another one hour to deal with the subject he said ittaku firasat al-mu'min fa innahu yanzuru bi nurillah fear the firasa the firasa is that hikmah or that wisdom of the believer which is intuitive in nature and founded on spirituality fear the intuitive internal spiritual insight or wisdom of the mu'min because when he sees he sees with the nur of Allah and so this hadith is speaking about epistemology and about spirituality the absolute imperative of pursuing the spiritual quest so that you'll have internal nur with which to see and so that you have a chance of walking in the path of Khidr alayhi salam after all it is Surah Al-Kaf of the Quran which is the Surah of Ilmu Akhir Zaman Paraksilas and Khidr alayhi salam is different from the rest because you'll only meet him where? you'll meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain Majma'ul Bahrain the place where the two oceans meet which two oceans go to Imam al-Baydawi and his tafsir? The ocean of knowledge externally acquired. The ocean of knowledge internally received. When these two oceans of knowledge come together, as they did in my teacher of blessed memory, Mawlana Dr. Fadl Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah, when these two oceans come together in an individual, in a scholar and are harmoniously integrated only then do you have the scholar who can take all the pieces together and solve the jigsaw puzzle and deliver to you the big picture and so today we address them Protestant Islam and we ask you to take another look at epistemology and at spirituality, the methodology that we are offering. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim wa tawa alayna ya mawlana inna ka anta tawab rahim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahmin. Ameen.